Um, welcome to How to Organize Your Season. Um, my name is Abby Esmeyer. I am a T930 project management mentor, as well as a recent alumni of T930. And I was also a 2022 Dean's List finalist. Um, currently in my life, I am a computer science and management student at the Monty School of Engineering. Um, and I also work as a project lead intern at TAPCO, um, which makes signs all around the country. Um, and this will be my fifth season in FRC, and I did four years of FLL before that, so my ninth in first, which seems like a lot the more I say it out loud. Um, so what is organization in FRC? Well, welcome to day one, believe it or not. Uh, today is kickoff. Today is the beginning of probably some of the most hectic points of your year as a whole. Um, six weeks building a robot, six weeks of competing with a robot tends to have a lot of strain and toil and uh, organization needed for a team, especially with uh, teams both very, very large and very, very small. Um, having a plan, a schedule, and a lot of communication can really be a make or break point for your robot and for your season. Um, and today we're going to talk about a couple of tools to help with organization that can free up the time that we need to have in the season for building a robot and managing social media and programming a robot and taking the robot to competitions. Um, all the things that you know most people tend to want to do in robotics. So we are actually going to jump right in to what Team 930 uses for our uh, team management. Um, so we use a tool called Trello. Uh, Trello is a Kanban project management system. Uh, Kanban management is this. Uh, you have different columns with different tasks, uh, each of which you can move from a backlog to a today to complete it. Um, we have been using Trello for the last two full seasons. Uh, this will be our third full year with it as a whole team management. Um, and then before that, in 2021, we used it in a couple of sub-teams, uh, just kind of testing it out for the first time. This Trello that you see here has gone through probably 10 to 12 versions of iteration of cards, of how we organize it. The today task didn't exist before last year. The completed task didn't exist. Uh, we were using it as actually not a Kanban project management system at all. Um, but rather just a place to store tasks that needed to happen. And we used that for the full 2022 season. Um, and it actually was not, uh, it did not like hurt us in any way, but it was not the best way that we could be using the tool. Um, we actually have three Trello boards that we use on a whole team level now. This is the universal board, um, which you can see is quite large. Um, so we have all of our backlogs broken up by general and then all of our subteams. So our general is pretty much anything that is long-term storage. Uh, you can see ideas for demos. That is just a list of like, hey, we could go demo at like the park. Uh, and then different fun events that we want to do as a team. But the real tasks go into the subteam back backlogs. So we have our first impact team, strategy, business, electromechanical and programming team. Uh, they all have student leads in charge of them as well as different sub leads on the team. And all of these sub leads get together before each meeting and they go through the Trello and they're like, all right guys, what is the season schedule so far? Where are we at? And what tasks need to happen today? And then they look at who is coming to the meeting today and who can do these tasks. So in some of our backlogs right now, uh, is a lot of our sponsorship. Uh, it's the beginning of the season, kickoff time, we're trying to finalize some of our finances. So our business team, they have people assigned at the corner, this is our business lead, he is assigned to each of the tasks that he is going to be doing at each season, or at each meeting. So he has all of these in the backlog because they are not going to be worked at at the meeting tonight or today, or because it's kickoff, uh, not, not really today at all. Um, and then if you scroll, all of these tasks could be happening today, they could be happening tomorrow, they could be happening before competition. Uh, this is any time if they're in a study hall, 
if students are working at home, if they're at the meeting, if they're in lead meeting, they can come into Trello and they can add in, we have to contact the demo, we have to contact uh, our sponsors, we have to make a new belly pan, uh, we have to refactor the code. All of these go into tasks for the backlog, literally anything throughout the season. We have tasks in here that will be happening before we pack up and leave for our first regional. Um, and they're just things that are open to all of the team to see. Um, the way that we used to do this, we used to just have business tasks and what was happening today. So each sub team would have their today log. Um, and it used to be that only the leads would really ever see this and edit it. We're getting away from that this season. Uh, we're adding in the whole team, not only for visibility, but also for assigning tasks. Um, you can see here all of the people in their little pictures. That's Greg's picture. If any of you know Greg, you can uh, look at him and his silly picture. Um, all of the leads are in here, a lot of the mentors are in here, and now all of the team members will be in here within the next week. So that we can look at the today's tasks and we can say, all right, Devin, you're working on making a social media post. Hayden, you're going to be writing our swerve code. Uh, all of the things that students can come into a meeting and they can open up Trello and be like, this is what I'm working on today. And then getting into more of the overall season schedule, um, as leads come in, they not only move in tasks to the, to the today tasks, um, this is, the today tasks in here are from our last meeting, uh, as well as the completed today tasks. So some of these were a lot of kickoff prep. Uh, kickoff interview questions, clean and organize the shop. Those were all things that uh, a couple people were working on or a lot of people were working on. Uh, and that just improved the visibility for students and for mentors of, we know that things need to happen today, what is going on, who is working on it, and who is responsible for it at the end of the meeting. Uh, as they get completed, it is the student's responsibility uh, to move them into the completed tasks, or we have an end of meeting meeting uh, where we all come together at the end and we go over what was in the today's task, what got completed, what maybe needs more time, if there's any blockers, uh, all the things that kind of go into running a real business. Uh, some daily stand-up meetings have a very, very similar way of running. Um, and then something that we put together just a couple of days ago is our season schedule. Uh, so we have the season schedule, all the weeks of build season, all of our competitions, and this is what we want completed by the end of Saturday of week one. In a, a week from today, our goal is to have all of this completed. Um, this is not every team's week one schedule. Obviously, a lot of teams have different priorities, different team member needs, um, all of this. But our lead mentors sat down and they created this plan to not only give the whole team visibility of what are the expectations for the season, uh, but what are the expectations for every week of the build season. What does week four look like? What does week seven look like? Uh, what does going to our preseason kickoff, or not, our preseason competition, going up to Sussex, what does that look like? What does the robot look like at that point? Um, this is all done, obviously, pre-kickoff, pre-game. Um, so it is done in very general terms of, like, the superstructure. We don't know if that's going to be an elevator, a shooter, a boat, a uh, water game coming back. Um, it is all done just very generally, CAD for drivetrain done. Drivetrain wired, swerve modules assembled. Obviously week one is a little bit easier, it's a little bit, uh, the smaller scope um, makes it very easy to say, we want to have a working drivetrain by the Saturday of week one. Once you get up to week four and week five, it's a lot more difficult to say, we want the entire robot to be ready and in programming's hands. What does that robot look like? We have no idea. But we can say, we want to have a robot completed and handed off to programming by week three. That is Team 930's goal for this season. Um, these goals change a lot. Uh, they'll probably change in the next two hours when we get a game and we figure out what the robot starts to look like, what kind of time commitments we might have for programming, 
uh, what the end game looks like. Maybe there's no shooting and maybe it's just climbing. We have no idea. Uh, but we make a season schedule before every season and then just last week we presented this to the leads and we got alignment on this. So we presented this to all the leads and made sure that they understand this is the expectations that we are stepping into the season with. <coughs> this is what we want our season schedule to look like. And there are concerns. Um, obviously, we, we run at a fairly high-paced schedule, um, trying to get robots done in three weeks. Uh, actually, two robots done in three weeks um, is a lot. And it is working with our student leads, working with our mentors, working with the team as a whole to understand what time commitments are needed, uh, what meetings should look like, um, and that kind of drives it into what we do as lead meetings. Um, so 30 minutes before every single team meeting that 930 has, all of the leads come in early. Uh, they come in so they can fill out Trello. Uh, they have, it is a dedicated 30 minutes where it is only mentors and leads uh, that they can talk to each other, that they can voice their concerns. They can communicate with, hey, programming team, we want the robot today. And they're like, we were planning on running all of our auto paths. That happens a lot. Believe it or not, people think they have the robot at a meeting most of the time. Um, during our lead meetings, the expectation is for leads to fill this out completely, get all of the tasks in the today column, uh, and then assign students to those tasks. Uh, leads also get like some announcements um, they get to make some of the plans. They get insight into, hey, we're not looking like we're going to hit our goal to have a robot by week three. Maybe we need to add in some extra meetings. Uh, that's when all that planning tends to happen in lead meetings. So after lead meetings are over, the whole team comes into the shop, and then we go over all of the today's tasks in front of everybody. Uh, this is just for visibility. It's to make sure that students understand not only where they are going on a day, where their sub team is going, but where the entire team is working towards. Um, people and sub teams can get kind of pigeonholed, um, working on only business things or only programming things. Uh, we want to make sure that they not only understand what the whole team is doing, but how the actions of the rest of the team affect their own schedules. And then after the meeting, everything's moved into the complete, and then complete today will be moved over to the complete uh, before Monday, and that just kind of rounds out our universal Trello. Do you have a today task and a complete for each sub team, or is that just no. one master? It is one master today's list. Okay. Um, we used to have each sub team was just their today tasks, um, and then we decided to transform it more into a cohesive list, just time and ease, really. Uh, trying to scroll back and forth can be. A little, a little weird. And then we also found that when people are just looking at their sub teams today tasks, uh, they get the pigeonholed effect again, where they're not really understanding what the rest of the team is doing. And we really try to promote that to our students. <coughs> Any other questions about the universal Trello? Yeah. Is backlog then just kind of a dumping ground of everything yep. that I need to do? Randomly everything. Put in. Okay. Um, I was the team program manager for the last two years, so I was managing this Trello. Um, and I helped start it for the universal board itself, I would sit in my study halls and I'd be like, okay, we have to build the robot. Um, no, it'd be like, we have to update our website with the new sponsors from this year. We have to refactor the code. We're adding another motor. Uh, I would send out slacks and I'd be like, hey, I'd ping the leads channel. I'd be like, hey guys, like. So it's kind of a brain dump of everything. Yep. Okay. Really easy for the leads to make it. Um, when we go over as a whole team, we ignore the backlogs. The backlogs are for the leads to work and to think and to write in anything that might need to happen. And if it turns out we don't need it, you can just delete the card. Um, we really only focus on the schedule, the today and the completed when we're working as a whole team, uh, just so the leads kind of have their own space. Um, some of these, I am, I love Trello. I have been using it for a couple years now. It's really great. Uh, you can also, it's free, one. You don't have to pay for this at all. You get up to 10 boards on a workspace account totally for free. And you can have, we have over a dozen members on this board right now. Um, it is so, so helpful. And you can also connect it to your Slack. You can connect it to uh, different things like ethics. 
You can set due dates. Um, we have due dates up here. You can do descriptions. Um, and then you can also do checklists. Uh, so if this will scroll, this is our order list. Programming reviewed their order list checklist. Good job, Jack. Uh, but our other subteams still need to. So as they happen, they can come in here and check it off themselves. Uh, and it just makes it so easy. So I'm pro Trello all the way. How many kid people on your team? How many mentors do you have? Uh, 30 students, 15 mentors. We're two to one ratio. Um, yeah, anything else for the universal Trello before we go into our other Trellos that we use? Cool. Um, these are some of our newer Trellos. Um, this is our very fancy, complicated part tracker Trello. Um, all of the cards in here I made up for this. These are not... Uh, well, some of them are real from last year, but I went in this morning and I'm like, I need some cards for a demonstration. So this is our part tracking Trello that is very, very wide. So we're only going to see parts of it at a time. But this is how we track all of our designs and physical parts for our robots. Um, so this, a lot of time was sunk into this, and it's mostly automated, where you can get your drivetrain in, I'm, I, look, I was like this morning, what is a thing that's definitely going to be on a robot this year? And I'm like, you need to drive. So <laughs> drivetrain is the safest design that I could think of. Um, so this is, it's in progress. Our CAD team is going to be in progress with the CAD of the drivetrain at some point. Um, and then as things move along, obviously they will get a lot more specific, like uh, hood for a shooter or the gearbox for an elevator. Um, all of the things will go in here, and as they progress, the leads will come in, and they will move it along to needs drawing, needs toolpath, uh, and then we have our design reviews, and then sometimes things go on hold. These are some real parts from old robots. So this is from our 2023 competition robot. These are the part numbers that we use. So 930, 2023, this is a pulley larger, whatever that is. We have a part number for it. Um, and then the kind of red coloring there is actually a 3D printer. Uh, so this is a 3D printed part that needs to go, right now it's in ready for machine, so it needs to be sent to a 3D printer. Uh, we have another one, electrical panel front, which is a lasered part. Uh, so it has the part number, it has people assigned to it, it has a little note of what it is. And then if you come in here, it actually has some, nope, I don't want to do that. Um, that is a PDF of the drawing for it um, so that people can machine it right here. And this one, in our fake robot scenario, is on the machine right now. So this would be getting lasered currently. Um, we used this part tracker last year and then over the off season. You can see some of the abandoned parts, very sad. Um, but the complete parts is very good. Um, this is just how we have been tracking with our electromechanical team what parts have been made because we had a lot of times in the recent years where we would be making multiple parts or we would lose a part and have to remake it because our shop was kind of a mess. Um, so this is how we can track part numbers, drawings, where they are, what they need, who is working on them, uh, who designed them, who is machining them, all of that stuff is in our part tracker. Any questions about this? How do you update between the different sets? Do they go in a drag. Um, so okay. we're like, oh, it's actually not ready for machine. It oh. needs to be, it needs a drawing and toolpath review. And then you let Trello think, and then it'll update. Okay. Yeah. This one is very cool. I don't understand all of the workings behind it, um, but this is kind of the, the higher level of what Trello can be when you put a lot of time and effort into it. Um, and then finally, our order list. This is new for this season. Um, this is how we track all of the things that we need to buy. Um, kind of simple, same idea. What is the backlog of things that we don't need right now? What is ready to be reviewed? Ready, ready to order? What is ordered? Same thing. We buy a lot of stuff, and then it gets shipped, and we just don't open the boxes sometimes, or we lose it in the shop. 
So we have reordered probably dozens of bolts and bearings and metal over the years. So this is our new thing for this season that we're trying to reduce some of those. And we're trying to make sure that we as a team know what's going on. And I'm going to probably be done with the Trello part of this. Hey, Any quick, questions? Yeah, quick question. Yes. So this is a order list board? Yes. What are the small boards? These are what we need to order. Yeah, what's the name for that? Is it just a list or is it a um, board? This or? is a, uh, so these are cards and they're just like columns. Cards and columns. Yeah. Cards, we use cards because uh, Trello has them be cards. Lists also works for columns, tasks. All depends on what exactly you want. Any other questions on Trello in general? Cool. Um, all right, back to my slides. Um, this is over two, three years of working at Trello. These are some best practices that I have gone through. Um, you are not going to complete everything in your today's list. Probably, almost ever. Every, every meeting we, we have more stuff that didn't get completed in the today's column. Um, celebrate what you did get completed. This is a, uh, a good thing. Just because you're not hitting everything doesn't mean you're not making progress. Uh, this is a good motivation for just teams in general. Uh, making sure you celebrate what did happen, not what didn't happen. Um, assign people to tasks right away and very visibly. Helps with communication, helps with making sure that people know what they're doing. Again, take the time to go over today's task with the whole team at the beginning of the meeting. Very visible, very, everyone knows what they should be working on. Um, and if they don't, they can talk to their leads and be put on a Trello task or a Trello card. Um, if the, i.e. the part tracker or the order list, when they're being used, make sure that the people who are supposed to be using them know that they're supposed to be using them, and also how to use them. Uh, putting things in uh, is a very kind of specific way for some of these. Uh, they use templates and you need links and drawings. Make sure that your, your teams know what they should be doing, uh, just in general. And then for us, we have our leads create tasks. So make sure that your leads, if it is your leadership team that will be making them, make sure that they know when they're supposed to add them and when they're supposed to be updated by. For us, they can come into lead meeting and update all of their cards then. Uh, if your teams don't have any sort of lead meeting structure, um, make sure that if you want the cards created before the meeting, they just understand that. This is more of just a Trello, set Trello expectations. Um, listen, people need to communicate. And a lot of people need a lot of communication. So we use Slack for all of our team communication. I really like it. I think it's good. Uh, we have Slack channels for everything. We have just leads, just mentors, announcements, signups. All of our sub teams have their own Slack. Uh, some of our sub teams have multiple Slacks. Our electromechanical team is electromechanical, uh, design, electrical. Uh, it's tons of stuff, tons of Slacks. We like them. Simply finding old conversations becomes a lot easier if you kind of know in general what you're looking for. Uh, Slack is also free. We don't pay for our Slack. Um, we like it a lot. Lead meetings we talked about a little bit, so I'm not going to go more into depth with that. But again, super good way to not only be very visible, but to give your leads time while they're all together in person to plan, to update Trello, to just talk to each other, understand what the season or the week or the day is going to look like. This is something we do as a team. We set goals for the season. Um, so at the end of the season, we want to win X banners. We want to go to champs. We want to win an award. All of that stuff. Uh, we want to build a robot. Some of them are simple. Some of them are not. We do a goal setting retreat. Uh, we did it in the preseason in October. Uh, where we went to one of our sponsors' offices and we had all of the leads come in and set goals for one, three, and five years out. Uh, that's the first time we did three and five year, uh, just as a what does the next generation of Team N30 look like? What can we do now in this season to advance towards those goals? 
Uh, and then we also set one year sub team goals. So what is the programming team? What is the electromechanical team? What does the business team want to look like at the end of the season? What do we want to have accomplished? My final thoughts as turn on carrot browsing. No, thanks. No one organizational method will work for all teams. Uh, this is just kind of a deeper dive into what we on Team 930 do. Um, talk to your teams if you're interested in doing something like this. Reflect on what your team needs are, what your bandwidth is, if you have students, if you have leads, if you have mentors that cannot do, a pro do something like our Trellos. Don't try to fit it just because we, that's what we do. Uh, everyone is unique. Everything is going to be different from team to team. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of tools out there for team management, for team organization. Uh, we just use Trello because we have been using it for a couple years, and we have kind of shaped it to be what we want. Uh, I know there's Monday.com and all of the dozens of project management tools out there, many of them for free, that teams can use, and they're all a little bit different. Use whatever fits best. See what works or what doesn't. If you come in, you're like, that sucked. Don't use it. Uh, you get to pick where you're going. You, you need to find a way that's going to work with your team. If your leads don't want to fill out Trello, it's going to be a fight every day to get the team where they're going. They need to have a tie-in, they need to have a buy-in, and they need to want to do organization. They need to want to improve the team. And then just as the schedule, don't make a full season schedule. You don't need that for today. It is going to change. It is going to change so much. We made a full season schedule last year. It was completely different from pre-kickoff to pre our first regional. Um, it's just, it's going to be something that is good to have in the very beginning for your first week or two. But once you're there, you can make a week schedule at a time. You can make a day plan at a time. Um, and that will be better than nothing at all. And finally, not meeting a goal does not mean you aren't progressing towards them. Uh, there's a lot of times in the season where you won't get the robot done in time. You won't be able to, maybe you miss uh, a preseason event. We've missed scrimmages before because the robot wasn't done. That doesn't mean that we weren't working towards a completed robot. Yes, it sucks. Yes, it's very hard. Um, but it does not mean that you as a team are not improving and working. Right. Any questions? Thank you guys. Thank you guys.